Good morning, Zion Hope. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord. This Sunday morning, hallelujah. Anybody have a praise on your lips this morning because God has been that good of a God, hallelujah. Through the ups and downs, he's still good, hallelujah. Whether the good days or the bad days, God is still a good God, hallelujah. For Psalms uh, chapter 63 verse 4 says, I will praise you as long as I live and I will lift my hands up in prayer. I just have a question today. Anybody alive today? Just go ahead and pick yourself and check if you got blood running through your veins today, if you got breath in your body today, then you can say, I'm a candidate of being someone that's alive. So since I'm alive, I'm going to go ahead and praise the Lord. I'm not going to worry about the bills. I'm not going to worry about the mortgage. I'm not going to worry about stress. I'm not going to worry about baby mama drama. I'm not going to worry about co-worker drama. I'm going to praise the Lord this morning because he's just that good of a God. He woke me up. Hallelujah. Go ahead and tell your neighbor, he woke me up today. Hallelujah. He woke me up. He woke me up. That right there is enough to give God praise. Hallelujah. As you're standing on your feet, as you're praising God, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our wonderful praise team as we go higher in the Lord this morning. Come on, you got a hand praise in this house. It is good to see you this morning, Zion. How many people have anything to be thankful for? All right. We're going to tell God thank you this morning. Amen. tell the Lord, thank you. If you haven't said it all week, this is the time to say it.
for you, for your loving, loving, your loving all of us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I want to thank you, Father. I want to thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. Thank you, Jesus. taught me manners. She said,
looks like we have some thankful folk in the room today. A spirit of gratitude. How many know our thank you is personal? Each and every one of us know who God has been in our lives. And for that, God deserves a thank you. Hallelujah. We give you glory today, God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Well, don't mind us. You know, we just doing what we do, praising the Lord here at Zion Hope. Hallelujah. We welcome you to the Sunday service this morning where Pastor Grant is our pastor and First Lady Marcia Grant is our First Lady. For those that are watching us live, we thank you for participating with us in worship service because we're just here to hear what God has for us and to give it up back to God. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. At this time, we're going to go ahead and go in prayer. Amen. As I mentioned the scripture this morning, the second part of the scripture says, I will lift my hands to you in prayer. So I'm just going to go ahead and ask if we can lift our hands. Heavenly Father, Lord, we lift our hands to you. And even this move of action is a show of submission, a sign of surrender. Because we know that we are not here by ourselves, but it's because you have destined, Lord, for us to still live. So we say thank you. We honor you, God, on today because you are allowing us, God, to be able to do it yet again Hallelujah. We don't take it for granted, this life you've given us, because so many others don't have this opportunity. So, God, we pray that while we are here, that we will pay attention to your spirit, to your move on today, Lord. God, we pray that there is a word that you're going to bring forth that will touch those that need to hear it, God. We are not coming here empty, God, but we're coming with expectation. And, Lord, we're expecting you to fill us up. We're coming thirsty and we're coming hungry, God, for you. So, Lord Jesus, fill us up today, God. There's so many things that this world want to fill us up with, God. The enemy, God, he just chooses to distract us, Lord. He comes after us like a roaring lion, God. But we pray that you send your arms of protection around us, Lord. Let us be in the fence that you are putting ahead yet even now of protecting us, Lord, from the attacks of the enemy, God. Protect our minds. Protect our souls. Protect and guard our hearts, Lord. Let our minds be placed on you. And as we do so, Lord, we pray that you will grant us with your peace. We're thankful for your mercy. We're thankful for your grace. For those that couldn't come today, Lord, we're even sending prayers even now. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We pray for the offering and the tithes that are going to go forth. That it be a blessing to your ministry and to your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let's prepare ourselves for giving time. Amen. It's giving time, y'all. Cheerful giver. 
Amen. And there's so many ways you can give your tithes and offering. You can go on our website, zionhopenbc.org. You can use the Tithely app, the Cash app, um, or you can give by mail at 4867 Van Dyke, Detroit, Michigan, 48214. There's also ways to do a love offering to pastor. 1 Timothy 5, verse 17 says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. And we know our pastor is passionate about making sure we understand the word of God as he labors and teaching us. And you can do an offering online on the website, also via cash app, PayPal or Zelle, and those options are on the screen. Amen. We do have some announcements today. It is with a heavy heart that we acknowledge um, our very own uh, passing of uh, Minister Sharon Denise Wiley. She is forever in our hearts, and um, she lived a long life. And we love her. We loved her. Amen. She has definitely been a servant for the Lord, and she will be missed. There are no uh, further uh, funeral arrangements or memorial service. The family just asks that we acknowledge her today, and we do that. We honor her for her uh, life's labor and her legacy. Amen. Amen. Please continue to keep uh, the family in prayer as they go through uh, this time. Amen. Amen. So uh, we uh, continue to have our worship Sunday service on Sundays at uh, 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary and also um, online. Uh, Wednesday Bible study continues to be at 12 noon um, in person and online. Um, Christ Bible Seekers, uh, that's where for our children ages 3 to 18, uh, that's um, housed in the fellowship hall every second and fourth Sunday. So if you have children, you can definitely uh, sign them up um, in the fellowship hall for their class, amen. And um, the children's Bible seekers are also asking for more teachers and volunteers to assist and to join the team. How many know that kids can't learn? Well, they can learn by themselves, but you know they need guidance and support, amen. So if you are passionate about working with children and helping them grow in the Lord, uh, please see uh, Minister Jason Roscoe, Minister Jaquita McGee, or Sister Crystal McGee, or you can even go to the fellowship hall after service and express your interest, for they are looking for assistance so they can extend um, Christ's Bible Seeker service through, uh, for the other Sundays as well. Right now it's second and fourth, and they wanted to be able to do it more. Amen. New Membership Academy, the next class is April 1st uh, at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. via Zoom. That's uh, next Saturday. And so if you are interested, you can go on our website and hit become a member, fill out the information, and you will uh, get a phone call, uh, next steps. Or you can call uh, Sister Geraldine Thompson at 614-270-2912 or um, email us at Zionhope new membership at gmail.com if you have questions. Also, we are um, gaining those that are interested in being baptized. You can email us if you're interested and we will add you to the list and you do not have to be a member to be baptized. Amen. We are continuing to commit to our capital investment campaign, our CIC. So we are asking that you continue to give towards that. We're asking for $1 a day. Um, you can pay that weekly, monthly, yearly, however you want to, but that will help support the growth that we're doing here at Zion Hope. And we're excited of all the things that we get to do, hallelujah, for God's kingdom as we are growing in ministry and for the work of the Lord. Uh, Faith Moore is doing her, her junior recital called The Gemini Effect, April 15th at 7 p.m. on Eastern uh, Campus. Amen. So if you would like to support her, you can do so um, and go ahead and go to EMU's campus, amen, to support her as um, she continues with her college education. Um, how many had a good time last night at the game night, Family Feud? 
if you had a good time, we're excited that you were able to come out. The women's ministry and the other ministries that participated, uh, the men's ministry and the usher ministry, they say thank you. Thank you for coming out and fellowshipping and having a great time. And so I'm glad that that went well. Amen. Amen. There is one more announcement. Uh, women's ministry is also hosting a brunch next month, and uh, that will be um, April 22nd at 12 noon at Athena Banquet Hall, uh, 25650 Gratiot in Roseville, Michigan. Tickets are $35. You can see someone from the women's ministry if you want tickets. If you have tickets, please raise your hand so they know who they can go and see. There, you can go to see Sister Tammy right there, or Sister Frida over there, or Sister Ty. They have tickets. Next week, uh, registration will also be available on Eventbrite as well. So those are our announcements today. I'm going to go ahead and get out the way so we can continue to go higher in our worship service. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and give God another hand clap of praise. Amen. And turn it back over to our music ministry. Yes, Lord. Give God one more hand, praise, church. You know, with this next song, I want to make one big choir in here. One big choir. Do we have any sopranos out here? You got some sopranos? We got some altos? We got some tenors? Come on, tenors, let me hear you say something. Spirit. 
Now this is the part I want y'all to get in on. Sopranos, I want you to say this right here.
Amen, amen, hallelujah. We surely continue to give God glory and praise. And we're going to continue to do that because I know it's because of God. We're celebrating our children report cards today. So we're going to ask that our uh, Christ Bible Seekers class come on out so we can acknowledge uh, those that have submitted their report cards and that have received A's and B's on their record cards. We know it's by God's glory. Look, we knew God was in the classroom, amen? With all of the distractions that we face nowadays, what our children face, our parents face, it is a blessing to be able to acknowledge and recognize those students that uh, continue to do well and excel, amen, with their academic stu uh, study. So, um, we just welcome them to come out. They're coming out now. So as they're coming out, let's go ahead and give it up for them as they're walking in the sanctuary this morning. Look at all our children. Look at all the children, y'all. Let's give it up for the children. Amen, amen, amen. Woo, woo, woo! Woo, woo! Good morning, good morning. to God. So remember this morning when I said that they need some help, this is the help that we need y'all. So we, I want to do another announcement. If you are passionate about helping our children learn what God has for them, we ask that you volunteer and you go to the fellowship hall after service to express your interest so that we can continue to do this for them every Sunday, not just second and fourth Sunday. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we have three students we're recognizing that has um, A's and B's. And the first person is um, Jason Roscoe. Where are you? Is he here? Okay, it's $20 for every A and $10 for every B. So he has three A's and three B's. Amen. Amen. Next, we have uh, Joshua McGee. Where's Josh at? All right. All right. Josh has four A's and one B. Woo, let's give it up for him. And we have one more student, Lamar Campbell. Where is Lamar? All right, Lamar. All right. He has two A's and one B. Amen. Those are the report cards we've received. So um, I'm going to have our pastor come and he can say some more words. Amen. Let the church say amen. All right. For those of you uh, that have good report cards and they called your name, step, step to the front. They want you to step to the front. Who are? Who else? Yes. All right. <clears throat> Very good. And, uh, I, was it three? I thought it was three. Wasn't it three? The other one is not here. Okay. Very good. And so for this young man right here, how, how, how much? Um, how much? Okay. Phipps. I'm trying to figure out how much, how much his report card. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She said her ADHD is kicking in. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. okay. Josh has four A's. It's okay. Four A's. All right. All right. There he is. Listen. Amen. All right. All right, brothers. All right. And so um, he has four A's. So that's two, four, six, eight. And one B is what? $90. I, 
Y'all gonna have to support y'all children. What's the next one? The next one is Jason. Jason. Roscoe. Roscoe. Three A's and three B's. Okay, three A's, three B's. All right. Two, four, six. And you had three B's, right? So that's 90 again. Somebody have changed for a uh, 100. Somebody, I need, yeah. Uh, I got a rich deacon up here somewhere. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so. There you go. Thank you, sir. All right. Two, four, six, eight. Okay. Let me give you the other ten in here. That's the wrong pocket. All right, and Lamar Campbell. Lamar Campbell, two A's, two A's and one B. Okay, so that's $40, 50, 50 bucks, mm -hmm. and that's 50 bucks. Um, Jesus. Somebody give me $10. Oh. All right. All right. There we go. All right, that's all I need. There you go. There you go. All right, everybody taken care of. Good job, 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 amen. And Miss Crystal, is she here, Miss Crystal? All right. Um, this is Miss Crystal and her staff. I want y'all to just li lift your hands uh, because I want y'all to see who's working so diligently to take care of our children. Amen. And uh, she works very hard uh, to try to make sure all of our children are in the, the space where they can learn. Amen. About Jesus. Amen. And so come on, give it up for them once again. Amen. 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 I was, I was, I was grateful to see that there was three men that was excelling in their classes. Amen. And uh, not that I have anything against the women. It's just the fact that it's refreshing to see young men thriving in this generation. And. Uh, we are grateful to God for their success, and we want to always reward them. And for those of you that are sitting out there listening, um, uh, it, it applies to you, amen, um, because we're trying to uh, inspire and encourage uh, people to strive to be their best, amen. And um, um, sometimes when you are in class, you need some inspiration. Amen. And so uh, we want to try to continue to inspire people who are trying to learn and try to do the, um, what they can to, to better themselves. And so uh, just continue to pray for all of the individuals that uh, are in school, especially our young people. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Now, uh, on last night, we had... A ball. Amen. We had a crazy good time. Amen. We had what we call friendly feud. Amen. And you talking about somebody acting crazy in the sanctuary. Man, we had a ball. Amen. For those of you that attended, won't you stand to your feet? Amen. Because we want you to see all of the individuals that actually came. We invite y'all to come next time. And um, it was the male against the females. 
Amen. And guess who won? Whoop, 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 whoop. I am going to present the championship belt to the brothers. With the brothers who was on the team, would y'all please stand to your feet, sis? <laughs> Come on up, Cliff. Come on up. Come on up and receive the belt. Put it around your waist. You know My, my, hey man, bless you, man. Come on, these these are the individuals. Hey man, Martez, hey man, he was playing last night. They had a lot of good fun, and uh, I just thank God for the young brothers, hey amen, that come and participate, and so. Uh, Martez, God bless you and keep you as our prayer. And I uh, uh, want to continue to do something uh, on this level. The whole purpose is for us to get together and break down the barriers of not knowing people who you see every Sunday. Amen. Amen. And uh, we come into the sanctuary, we pass by people, we're familiar with their faces, but we don't ever get a chance to sit down and break bread or fellowship or have even conversation with people. And so we're trying to get past that because if we're going to be a family, that means we have to spend time together. Amen? And so uh, these efforts are put in um, or um, in, in, in inserted so that we can uh, make sure that the people who come to this church don't just know each other's face, they know each other through relationship. Amen? And so we bless God for it. Um, I want to share this with you. Um, um, Easter is coming, uh, April the 9th, I think it is. And uh, uh, I think we're going to make our mask optional. Now, for those of you that are still scared, amen, amen. I love you too. <laughs> And so for those of you that are still a little on edge, we, we ain't tripping if you decide to wear your mask. Uh, but for those of us, um, uh, amen, that, that feel okay, um, tell somebody, I said, it's April the 9th. We're going to all do it together. I said, we're going to all do it together on one accord. Amen. And so when Easter comes, Amen. You ain't got to mess up your Easter outfit with a mask. <laughs> Amen. And so just remember, April the 9th. Amen. And that's where we want to start. And um, we want to make it optional so that people can feel comfortable uh, with coming in. And then people who don't feel so comfortable, you still have the option of wearing your mask. Amen. All right, I got one more thing to do, and we're going to talk about the Bible. Amen. Um, uh, uh, is there a, a woman that's in here that have three children, and all three of, of your children is in children's church? All right, all right, all right, all right. Come, come. Come up here. Come on. Come on, dog. Um, all right, all right, all right. We got one, two, three, four. All right. All right it's for y'all. All right. And so um, I, I, I was, I, I, I bowl on Tuesdays, on Thursdays, Fridays, <laughs> Mondays. <laughs> But on my Thursday uh, day lead, had a young man by the name of Mike Watts, who is my bowling brother, all right? And um, he, uh, if you know Mike, Mike is a little different. Uh, and so, uh, but he sat down beside me and he said, Pastor, he said, uh, he didn't call me Pastor, he said Curtis, he said. And he says, the Lord put it on my heart to give you this money for someone who come to your church and they are raising children, and they're trying to do the best they know how to do. 
And so he gave me the money. And he says, I just need you to get it into their hands. And I promised him that I would. And so um, when I was dealing with him, I saw in my mind three, um, three children, all right? Those children belonged to women that belonged to Zion Hope. And they were all in children's church, all right? And so that's how y'all got selected today, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you 200 Give you 200. Give you 200. I'm going to give you 200. Amen. We don't know why God does what he does. Amen. Just learn to be grateful for whatever he does. Amen. And so we bless God for you today. And um, just continue to pray, saints. Um, uh, the Lord is trying to show us in this day and time that he ain't playing with us. Amen. If, if, if we can have enough faith to do what's right, God will always find a way to bless you. Amen. Oh, God, I wish I could help y'all. Mm, find a way to bless you. Amen. And sometimes, how many know that when you're doing right, it just don't seem like it's working? Amen. How many people have ever been there? Just, you're doing right. You're trying to keep your head down, do right. It don't seem like it's working. Tell somebody, say, but there is a process in place that if you can just wait on the Lord, and be of good courage. He will strengthen you if you can just wait. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Amen. We want to continue uh, to, for those of you and for those of you fathers and your mothers that are here and you have children, <clears throat> I want to challenge you to bring your children with you. And when you bring them here, take them to children's church so that we can train them in there while we train you in here. <laughs> amen, somebody. Amen, amen, amen. I know we want to give our kids, you know, a choice, but uh, I don't think there should be a choice when it comes to the God of their salvation. You have to teach them, amen, what is right and what is wrong. And so... We challenge you, amen, uh, to bring your children so that we can teach them the very words of God. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for Minister Phipp for getting us through worship. And to all of the individuals that work so diligently behind the scenes. And we thank God for them uh, today <clears throat> because uh, without them, there is no us. Thank you. And uh, come on, help me celebrate those individuals that work so diligently behind the scenes. And they are always working to make sure that we um, have what we need. And so I'm forever grateful to the people who sacrifice their precious time in order for us to be what we need as a church. And so with that being said, amen, uh, we want to talk about the Bible. Amen. And uh, I want to say this, um, I was <clears throat> meditating during the week and um, uh, there were some things that the Lord had placed in my heart and I want to deal with today. Uh, and so we're going to take a break from Mark chapter 6 and uh, we're going to look at Romans chapter 10 and 9. And um, uh, the Lord put some things in my spirit and... Um, I want to deal with it today maybe to help somebody to get through the process because sometimes when you don't understand the process, it becomes difficult. And uh, I want to kind of help some of the people who have been going through some things. Romans chapter 10, and we'll start with verse 9. And we'll read from 9 to 14. We won't, we won't do it all, but we'll just read it. Amen? 
Amen. We'll start from verse 9 and then we'll conclude at verse 14. If you have it, shout, I got it. If you're on your way, shout, I'm on my way. Amen. Don't forget Bible class Wednesday. Amen. At 12 o'clock and we are uh, in the process of trying to establish a 6 o'clock Bible class. Um, and we're going to probably start every first Wednesday of the month. And so once we clarify that and get the information out, we will send it out to those of you that are interested. Amen. And so um, Romans chapter 10, starting with verse 9, ending with verse 14, let us read together. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And, the, and how shall they hear without a preacher? And that is the reasoning of the word. And uh, if I were to tag this text, I would just simply tag it, I'm saved, but it don't feel like it. <laughs> I'm saved, but it don't feel like it. And I solicit your prayer. What is interesting about this salvific walk is that there are things that God does in the spirit that we oftentimes do not feel in our flesh. The Lord has allowed us to bring in a lot of people after the pandemic and we open the house of God up and many people have been being saved ever since the doors has opened. But what has struggled with the individuals who have been saved is the fact that they're saved and they just don't feel like they're saved. And so I thought it'd be good for us to deal with the salvation, uh, the salvicious uh, transfer from being saved or from not being saved to being saved because what people don't understand is that being saved is a process. And so the Bible opens up by saying, if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has, he died for our sin and God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says that thou shalt be saved. And when you are the individual who does the confessing, God in the spirit realm moves you from the darkness into the marvelous light. When you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he stamps your record no longer going to hell, but now you have a ticket on your way to heaven. When you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he changes your position so that you won't 
ever have to worry about busting hell wide open because God has declared you to be saved. And so how many know that even though God has declared us to be saved, the struggle with being saved is my body have not received the memo. I'm saved because God said I was saved. I'm saved because God has eliminated my trip to hell. I'm saved because God done something in my position but my struggle is not the fact that I don't know I'm saved. The struggle is my body still us acting like it don't know it's saved and so if you would tell the truth today you will know that the moment you confess Christ you have to know mentally God has sealed you until the day of redemption but your struggle ain't your mind your struggle is your flesh because how many people in here can honestly be honest with somebody next to you that being saved in this world is not an easy walk because when you are saved your body rebels against what your mind declares that you are and you find yourself in a civil war fighting within yourself because your mind know you're saved but your body keeps rebuilding and I wish I could get some people that will testify to the truth that the fact that I'm saved become the struggle because my mind know I'm saved but my body is still in the struggle and so you have to understand brothers and sisters that when your mind is in one place and your body is in another place it wants to submit that you've been divided in your mental you have been divided in your mind and the Bible says that a double minded man is unstable in all of his ways and that explains why you keep falling because anything that is unstable Table can't hold its own ground because when you're stuck between being saved and dealing with this wretched body there is a struggle that goes on that keeps me unstable I want to do right but my body don't want to follow I want to come to church but my body don't want to wake up in the morning I want to say the right thing but my body keeps telling me to cuss him out like in three different languages my mind want to do the right thing but my body keeps I'm trying to help somebody in here and tell somebody I'm in the struggle uh, but can I give you some praise uh, worthy information if you're in the struggle that means God is still at work and I wish I could get somebody to pop to your feet and tell somebody I'm saved but it don't feel like it because as long as I'm in the struggle God is still trying to pull me out of the darkness that I was in and I wonder is there anybody in here can give God a hand clap of praise cause you still feel the struggle is there anybody anybody that can give God a praise because I feel him on the inside pulling me out of my darkness every time I want to go back he keeps on pulling me forward and there's a struggle back and forth forth and back back and forth forth and back but tell somebody thank God for the struggle because every time I feel the struggle that tells me God is at work and I wonder is there anybody can jump to your feet and give God a hand clap of praise for being at work in the middle of your struggle ah, somebody shout work on me Lord work on me
uh, 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 understand, understand, uh, this, this, this flesh don't die easy. Uh, uh, it, I said it don't die easy. And so when you come into the marvelous light, tell your neighbor, say, you're going to have a fight. I just want to talk to the real folks for a moment. Uh, uh, and saints, I don't know uh, when, 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 when I was living in my, my unsaved life, I used to go to parties all the time. And uh, there are times when if you stay in the darkness long enough, when you come out of darkness, you have some problems. It's called the adjustment. Because if you stay in darkness long enough, uh, your, your mind and your body and your eyes adjust to the darkness. But when you come up out the darkness into the marvelous light, the first thing that happens is that there's a piercing pain that goes along with the light coming through your darkness. And then when you get into the light, you have to stay there for a moment because your mind or your, 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 your lens and your eyes has to adjust to what's going on in the room. Can I preach to y'all in here and tell somebody, say, and when you come out the darkness into the marvelous light, tell somebody, say, there's an adjustment period that has to go on. And you've got to understand that in your adjustment, you're going to always be unstable. But don't get upset because that's why the Bible says the righteous man falleth seven times, but he gets up again. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. I want to preach the Bible in the place. Proverbs 24, 16 says it like this. A just man falleth seven times and rise up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. And the point he wants to make, the, uh, the promise, uh, he wants to accept you to help you understand, number one, what does it mean to be just? Somebody shout to be just. Simply means to be just as if you have never sinned. God, I wish I could help somebody in this place. In other words, let me get it. When you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you accept the work that he did on Calvary. And for those of you that don't understand the power of Calvary, the power of Calvary is that the wages of sin is death and God goes and dies your death so that you don't have to. But the blood that he sheds on Calvary's cross covers the sins that you've committed throughout your life. I feel like preaching to somebody in this place because how many understand that? that when he shedded his blood his blood covered your past sins somebody ought to praise him for your past sins then when the blood fell from Calvary's cross he covered your present sin somebody ought to praise him for present sins being covered and then God not only covered your present sin he also covered every sin that you will ever commit in your future somebody need to give him praise for completely covering all of your sins. Somebody shout, it don't mean my sin ain't gone nowhere. It means it's covered. And I want to know, is there anybody glad that when God looks at you, he can't see your sins because it's covered by the blood. Will somebody please jump to your feet and say, oh, the blood. I feel like preaching in this house because the blood is what covers my sin when God looks at me he don't see my sins all he see is the blood somebody shout the blood thank God for the understand understand uh, that during your adjustment period you, you fall because you're unstable uh, you're battling between that which is spiritual and that which is physical your, your, your body don't want to go but your mind wants to receive and, 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 and for those of you that have fallen during the course of you being saved the devil wants to play tricks in your mind and tell you you ain't saved and you need to know how to fight him when he shows up 
Tell somebody, say, I'm saved, even though it don't feel like it. How do you know you're saved? Tell somebody, say, because God declared I was. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Don't nobody want to get happy about being saved. Tell somebody, say, because he said, if I could just open my mouth and confess and believe it in my heart, then God declares I'm saved. Can I ask the question, can anybody in here that know you're saved jump to your feet and tell somebody I'm saved because he said I was saved. I ain't got to prove it to you. I ain't got to prove it to my neighbor. I ain't got to prove it to the preacher. I ain't got to prove it to my mama. I ain't got to prove it to my friends. I'm saved whether you want to think I'm saved or not. Why? Because when he declared I was saved, that settled it. If that anybody in here glad that God got the last word on your condition and can't nobody change it because when God declares you're saved that settles the issue listen 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 uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a, I'm glad I got some Bible readers in here, he's a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. Tell somebody, say, uh, I'm a new creature and the stuff I used to do is passing away. But I got to wait for the process because it don't go all at once because flesh don't die easy but I got to stick with Jesus until my flesh surrenders somebody jump to your feet say hold on to Jesus with everything you got and when it's all over God will make your flesh submit to your spirit somebody open your mouth and say God help me in this day to get my mind in order so my flesh will Now, now let, let me deal with you hustlers. Because when people normally hear stuff like this, talking about God has covered me with my sins, my past, my present, and my future sins, then I can just live like I want to. Tell the neighbor, say, you're a hustler. See, 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 let me tell you something. If your mind is thinking like that, then it wants to reveal you never left the darkness. Because now you're trying to make reasons why you are dark in your behavior because if you never left the darkness, you don't even know what light looked like. Can I preach to somebody in here? Tell your neighbor, say, you can't leave the darkness and come into the light and try to justify why you stayed in the darkness because once you experience the marvelous light, darkness ain't got nothing on you no more. And I want to know, is there anybody in here can jump to your feet and say, now that I've come to the light, I've seen how sweet life can be and I'm never going back to the darkness even though I fall every once in a while. Darkness don't have nothing on my life because everything I need is in the light if you're still trying to figure out how to sin then the likelihood of you coming out of the darkness is slim to none because when you come out of the darkness into the light then the light will always help you to understand why you are in the light <laughs> you don't want to justify your wicked behavior. That's why the Bible says uh, that a just man, watch this, falleth. I, I'm, I'm trying to read. Um, I say he falleth. So it's part of the progress. It's part of the process. Uh, you ain't going to come out of darkness into the marvelous light and not have some fall. I say you ain't going to do it. You ain't going to practice one way all your life and then try to make a transition and wake up and everything like it's supposed to be. Tell somebody, say, no, the flesh don't die easy. Watch, 
me because I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. Uh, and so I, I want you to understand uh, that, that it says that a just man falleth, watch this, seven times. I said seven times. I said seven times. For those of you that don't know numerology, uh, the, the number seven means completion. What he wants to say that a righteous man or a just man falls completely. What do you mean by that, Reverend? Well, let's talk. Uh, you see, the problem with the church is that we made sin too small. We got five categories. Adultery, fornication, drinking, smoking, and lying. I'll wait. And if you ain't done the five sins, you ain't sin at all. Tell your neighbor, say, no, 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 baby. Sin runs so much deeper than the five things you put on your fingers that you could never get beyond sinning. Because number one, let's talk about commission. Somebody shout commission. That's the stuff that you end up committing. That's the stuff you do God said don't do. And how many people in here guilty of doing what God says don't do. And then the second part of that is omission. That means leaving undone what God says you ought to do. How many people in here are guilty of leaving stuff undone that God says do? Look at your neighbor and look at, I want you to look around. Because when the Bible said love your neighbor and you ain't got to the place where you love your neighbor, you have violated the law. When you can't help somebody because somebody won't help you, you have violated the law. It ain't just you messing up is you not doing what God says do and if God says you ought to come to church and you don't tell somebody say you just messed up with the law ain't nobody saying nothing cause all you want to do is talk about fornication adultery drinking smoking what about God says out of your husband. What about God saying, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God? Ain't nobody saying amen now, right? So you want to talk about sin? Let's talk about it. You may not have committed it, but you've omitted it. And if by chance you got past them too, can I give you another one? Jesus says, if you look upon a woman to lust after her, you have sinned. Can I preach to the people who know the Bible? Y'all watch this, watch this. It wants to submit, you may not have performed the behavior, but your mind got you in trouble. Y'all fake up there, let me preach to these people over here. See, when you are trying to get in touch with God and you are in full-blown prayer, how many people will admit that sometimes things enter into your mind that ain't got nothing to do with Jesus? And how many know that you can be in prayer, you can be in worship, and the devil will send a thought that's live and in living color while you sitting up in the house of God, your mind have betrayed you because now you're thinking about stuff that ain't got nothing to do with God with the real people please pop to your seat and say God you're going to have to save me because there are things that enters into my mind that should never be there I gotta hurry I gotta hurry I'm having too much fun because all these sanctimonious folks walking around like they stuff don't stink. Tell your neighbor, say, humble yourself for God knock you off your ass. I mean the donkey. The donkey. He knocked Saul off the donkey. That was a ass. You walking around here with your nose in the air, if it rained, you'd drown. Ain't nobody going to preach with me. Tell somebody, say, baby, you can't get beyond falling 
And here is why. Because what you don't understand is that God understands the intent of the heart. What that means? That means the stuff that you do good is tainted by your motive. Let me give you some examples because some of y'all are slow like I used to be. Uh, see, see, there are people that shout and it appears that the Holy Ghost have hit you. Tell somebody, say, it was a ghost. It just wasn't holy. Because the reason that some people shout is so that they can get some attention. Don't nobody want to preach with me? Can I preach? Can I preach? Can I preach? Can I preach? That's why you want to roll all in the flow because you want to make sure everybody get. Tell your neighbor, say, the Holy Ghost is more intelligent than that because when you are under the spirit of the Holy Spirit, he knows how to shout without hurting somebody. He knows how to shout without falling. He knows how to shout without messing somebody else's dress up. He knows how to give God praise and not injure somebody in the course of doing it. Then you got people who serve and they serve for the wrong reason. Tell somebody, say the intent of the heart. You don't serve to the glory of God. You serve so that you can get close to people so that people make you look like you important. Y'all ain't gonna say amen, right? Don't nobody know you if you wasn't attached to the people that everybody know. And so you don't come to serve for the sake of giving God the glory. You come to serve so that people will know who you are. Y'all watch this. Watch this. My last one, and I'm, I'm moving on. I'm going to tell somebody, say, give and it shall be given. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over, shall men give unto your bosom? Tell somebody, say, hustler. Because some people give because they want God to give it back to them. Ain't nobody going to say nothing else, see? See, tell somebody, say, that's why your, your exchange and your return haven't showed up you yet because your intent is bad. <laughs> because y'all watch this. Tell somebody, say, the process is God is trying to teach you how to be a giver. And before he can give it back to you, you've got to develop a spirit of giving. Because when you learn to give your money, you learn to give your problems as well. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Listen, the Bible says, cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Tell your neighbor, say, if you're not a giver, you can't cast nothing because you're so busy holding on to the stuff that people hurt you with and the things that people said to you, all you can do is hold tight to it and God is trying to teach you that if I can teach you how to give your money, I can teach you how to give your troubles to me because if you learn how to cast all of your cares upon me, you won't be so troubled in your spirit. You will be so troubled in your mind if you just learn how to give. Tell somebody, say, God want to teach you how to forgive, but you can't because you're stingy. Tell somebody, say, it's so much better and it's so much greater than your money. Because how many know that when you can't forgive, you end up dying from the inside? It starts eating you like cancer when you can't forgive some people. And isn't it strange that you can't forgive people but God forgave you? That's the only reason you're on your way to heaven is because God forgave you. And tell somebody, say, now if God can forgive your wretched tale, then you ought to be able to forgive somebody else for the wrong they've done to you. With the real people, please pop to your feet and tell somebody, I ain't got nothing but love for you, baby. Because if I learn how to give, I give him my problems. I give
give him my headache. I give him my trouble. I give him my sorrows. I give him my ups. I give him my downs. Everything I learn, I learn how to. Tell somebody, say, when you get stuck on crack and you can't get off, learn how to. When you're on alcohol and you can't shake it, learn how to. When you're stuck with somebody you try to get away from, just learn how to. And once you put it in his hands, tell your neighbor, say, he'll work it out for you. Is there anybody that can give God praise for working out some stuff in your life? Pop to your feet and say, he worked it out just because I gave it over to Jesus and he worked. So he says that a man falleth seven times, wants to submit, he fall completely. Because as long as you live in this flesh, you're never going to be able to recover your innocence. When Adam messed up in the garden, he lost one thing that we could never recover. That's our innocence. And because you can't get innocent back, you can't be like God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. All have sinned and come what? That's why we keep coming short. Because we can never return to that place of innocence. Adam messed that up for all of us. And tell somebody, say, but we keep focusing on the fall. Tell somebody, say, that the praise is that when I fall, I don't stay there. Don't nobody want to say amen. Tell your neighbor, say, we all fall and we fall short. But tell your neighbor, say, the praise is God gives me the power to rise again. And I want to know if there's anybody in here that has ever fallen and God gave you the power to get back on your feet. Pump to your feet and tell somebody, the praise of my life is not that I haven't fallen. The praise of my life is that I had the strength to get back up again. When somebody put your hands together and give poor God praise for resurrection power. Every time I fail, God gave me power to get back up again. That's why I keep on walking in the spirit because God has given me power. Listen, we gotta go. We gotta go. Listen, 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 listen. Uh, 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 how many be- people in here uh, remember when your baby start to learn to walk? Uh, uh, the first they start off on their knees and their hands, they crawling through the floor, and then all of a sudden one day you walk in the room and they. And, and you see them like, oh, oh my God. He's standing up. And, 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 and because you know that the first step of, of walking is standing, you start anticipating that the next move of the child is going to be a step. And y'all watch this. How many people in here as parents, when you saw your kid take the first step, was excited by the fact that he was learning how to walk? Tell your neighbor, say, you don't understand the excitement of heaven just knowing that you stood up on your feet and now you're trying to walk in the spirit. And how many know that even when you are baby in Christ, even though you're trying to walk, you'll fall every once in a while. But daddy and mama don't whoop you for falling. What they do is they hurry and they pick you up, put you back on your feet and say, try it again. Somebody jump to your feet and say, that's how daddy is. When he sees you trying to walk and you make Make a mistake and fumble. He rushes down to pick you up. Put you back on your feet and say try it again. Is there anybody in here that can give God praise for a try it again God? Somebody open your mouth and say God thank you for letting me try it.
got to go. I'm having too much fun. And so, tell somebody, say, don't lose a lot of faith because you fail. Tell somebody, say, what you ought to do, if God, give God praise because you was able to get up again. There anybody in here got a testimony that God keeps lifting you up? Every time you fall, he puts you back on your feet. Tell somebody, say, now that deserves a praise. And I want to take two seconds to give him what he deserves. Come on, give it. Woo! Bless his name. Listen, we got to go home, but don't focus on the fall. Focus on the strength that God got you back up again. Because y'all, how many people in here will admit that when you fall, it's hard to shake it? Because the devil tries to use that as the evidence that you ain't saved. I wish I could talk to y'all in here. The only person I know that ever was ever, 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 ever was able to live without falling was Jesus. And they nailed him to a cross. Point I'm trying to make for you and I'm trying to hurry is the fact that if you are righteous, if you are justified by the blood of Jesus, falling it's part of the process. But thank God for getting up power. Because after you fall, you don't want to stay there. I say you don't want to stay there. You got to get up and keep moving forward with your spiritual progress. Are y'all listening to me? Let me tell you this, and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to conclude if Lord, Lord turns me loose. Uh, it's interesting how people sit back and judge people's falls, especially in the house of God. Pray for us. And you know what upsets me about folk who sits back and talk about other people's falls? What upsets me is the fact that you act like you ain't got none. I wish I could get an amen in here somewhere. Because if the truth be told, if you were minding your own business, you wouldn't have no time to stick your nose in mine. Can I appreciate the real people in here? See, you on the helophone talking about my mess ups. But let me tell you something. Tell your neighbor, say, you got a whole lot of mess ups you can talk about, but you don't get on the telephone and talk about that. All you want to do is talk about how I messed up. But while you're talking about my mess up, tell somebody that I got up because God gave me the strength to pump up. And you ought to tell them that I'm still not in the place where I used to be because God brought me from where I was to where I need to be. Can somebody celebrate God that you're not where you used to be, that God got you up? and brought you where you needed to be and somebody ought to give him praise. What, what? Brother Johnson, uh, uh, we, we, we always focus on people's falls and we sit back and we dog each other out uh, and, and talk about you know, what he did, what she did, and uh, act as if you ain't never done it. That upsets me uh, because it makes people look self-righteous. But can I tell y'all what the Bible says? Uh, go, go to Galatians. You ain't got to turn, but when you get home, Galatians 6 and 1, what it says is this. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye 
that, you that are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, unless you also be overtaken. Now here's what it wants to submit. That if you be overtaken in a fault, and how many people can testify that we got some faults that we're still struggling with? What the Bible tells us is not to judge or to talk about. It says he that is spiritual. And this is how I know we ain't got a lot of spiritual people in church. We got a lot of spirit Ted folks. I'll wait. We ain't got a lot of spiritual people. We got a lot of spirit Ted. In other words, you look good on the outside. But ain't no spiritual content on the inside. You shout and you make everybody think you feel with the spirit. And the truth of it is you ain't got no depth of love whatsoever because you just trying to get some attention. Is this thing working? Watch this. Tell somebody, say, you don't know a spiritual person. Because a spiritual person has the heart of God. Y'all ain't hearing me. When a spiritual person finds out you've fallen, he ain't trying to destroy you. He ain't trying to expose you. He ain't trying to hurt you. What he's trying to do is to recover you. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Tell your neighbor, say the Bible says that, listen, love covers a multitude of sin. And when you love people right, you ain't trying to hurt them. You're trying to cover them. And y'all, I got to move. That, tell somebody, say, that word restore means to restore the broken bone. It wants to submit that when a person falls, he falls so bad that he breaks something. But those that are spiritual ain't trying to injure him any further than he's already been injured. What they're trying to do is put the bone back in place so it heals properly. And while you're healing, I cover you with prayer, Service, prayer, service, prayer, service. Because at one point you were broken, but now that I'm praying and serving you until you get back on your feet, there's going to come a time where you get healed again. And when you get healed, I'll step back and let you tell the testimony how one day you were broken and the Lord restores you. Is there anybody in here that can jump to your feet and give God a praise? I was broken in my life, but one day he restored me. He sent somebody to cover me with love and got me back on my feet and now I'm still alive because God gave me what I need share this with you and then I'm done if you want to solidify your stability if you want to not fall as often as you have previously. There are some things you got to do. Number one, you got to study to show yourself approved. A man needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Because knowledge is power if you use it. Y'all hear me? See, when you got knowledge, it's hard for somebody to tell you a lie you don't know it. Uh, so, so watch this, watch this. So, so, so if you're going to stabilize yourself, you got to get some, some knowledge in your head. And, and, and y'all, this is what the Bible says. It says, faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Because what he wants to submit, that the more words you get, the more faith you have. Yeah. How many know that when you got faith yeah. that can shake mountains, yeah. it'll keep you together while you're going through the roughest times of your life. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me? And this is what the devil don't want you to get to because he knows that if you mess around and get your mind together, that he loses power 
over control in your life. And so if you want to power yourself, get yourself in a predicament where you can stand on your own feet. Somebody might push you, you might stumble, but you won't fall. You got to get something in your head so that God can get something in your heart. I want to share this story, then I'm done if God turns me loose. Um, there's a story that is told about a man who fought dogs for a living. And uh, every Friday night, he would prepare the arena for the dogs to fight. The owner was getting old, and so he decided to train his nephew on how to run the fighting ring because he was getting old and he wasn't, able, wasn't going to be able to do it much longer. And one night when he was setting up the ring, the uncle went to the board and he starts to write the odds of the fight on the board. And if y'all don't know nothing about that, it simply wants to submit that when the people come in to gamble over the dogs who fight, the house gives certain odds on which dog's going to win and which dog's going to lose. And if you go in and you bet on a dog three to one, it wants to submit for every dollar you give. If the dog loses that's supposed to win, then you get three dollars to every one dollar you spend. Y'all know nothing about gambling, so. So, anyway. <laughs> I told you I ain't been saved all my life. I've tried to tell y'all. Y'all don't want to listen to me. But, 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 here, but here's this. Here's this. Um, and so while the uncle was writing the odds on the board, the nephew stepped to him and said, Unc. He said, yeah. He said, now, how is it that you can write the odds on the board before the fight ever happens? He said, Unc, how do you know which dog is going to win? Unc took him to the back. He said, son, let me show you something. I got a system. He said, you see these dogs on the right? He said, these dogs on the right, I feed every day. And you see these dogs on the left? I don't feed them at all. And the reason that I'm so confident that when I put these dogs in the ring, the dog who I fed it's going to have a greater time of winning because it got more strength than the dog I didn't feed. Come here for a moment. Can we talk for a second? Tell somebody, say, you don't understand that the dog you feed is going to win. If you feed your flesh, Don't nobody want to talk to me? Then when the fight breaks out, it's your flesh that's going to have more strength than your spirit and your flesh going to end up winning because if you keep feeding the flesh, the flesh got more strength than the spirit. But my God, if you decide to feed the spirit, and starve the flesh then when the fight comes out tell somebody say because I've been feeding the spirit the spirit got the power to override my flesh because my flesh is weak because I ain't been feeding it can anybody give God a hand clap of praise because I'm learning not to feed my flesh but to feed my spirit That is the secret to learning how to win the fight. People now fast because they want to lose weight. Tell somebody, say, wrong reason. Fasting is to starve the flesh so that you can get a word from the Lord. Because when your flesh is weak, your spirit intensifies itself so that you can hear from the Lord. Amen. 
you want to lose weight, use Jenny Craig. Go walking. Watch this. But fasting is so that you starve your flesh so that your spirit is strengthened so that you can get through to God and God can get through to you. And so saints, that's why we fast. That's why we fast. I, I'm not fasting to make y'all, you know, lose weight. I'm fasting because I need to teach y'all the principle. That God is trying to talk to you, and if you kill your flesh long enough, how many know you can hear him? Stand to your feet. Let's go home. I pray something has been said today to help you. Because when you're in an evil world trying to live for the Lord, it becomes extremely difficult and you have to understand man that you're saved but it don't feel like it sometimes because your mind is in conflict with your body I tell somebody I said, but if you hold your position long enough God will take your state of mind and make it so strong that your body would have to surrender to the things of God amen that's what maturity is okay you see people walking around here and uh, they don't, they don't, they're not easily upset. You know, it ain't that they don't get upset, they're just not easily upset. Amen. Because when you get to a place of maturity, you realize that there are some fights that ain't worth fighting. Yeah. Amen. And that's called maturity. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, at the end of the day, you just have to realize uh, that there are some things that's worth your time and then there are some things that are not. Amen. Amen. And uh, you, you know, you deal with people who comes in your life once a year and you're upset because of what they think. But guess what? They have no impact on your destiny, your life whatsoever because they only show up once a year. And so I want to open the doors of the church because there might be somebody today that's willing to go through the process because believe me when I tell you that as you go through it God will bring you to it and if you're in here and you know you have not been consistent in anybody's church in the last three months you have not been in anybody's worship and you know within your own heart that you have not been consistent I want you to be honest with God and yourself and just lift your hand right where you are. Thank you, for, thank you for being honest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. Thank you. Thank you. Listen. Listen. Here's what I want to do. For those of you that lift your hand, the only thing that you have to do is give an expression of your faith. Faith without works is dead. And if you are willing to surrender your life to the Lord, all you have to do is walk away from where you are. Come down here and stand with me. Amen. Come on. After you've done all you can. After you've done all you can. After you've done all you can. Here they come. Hallelujah. Bless his name. We're still waiting. We're still waiting. Hallelujah. Bless his name. My, my, my. Here they come. Here they come.
do you give when you're given your all and seems like you can't make it through shall you just stand and there's nothing left to do you just stand watch the Lord bring you through and after you're done all you can you just stand and be sure be not entangled with the bondage of can you just stand and endure God has a purpose yes God has a plan tell me when you're done all you can and it seems like you can't make it through child you just stand you just stand you just stand don't you dare give up don't you bow don't you bend don't give up don't give in hold on just be strong After you're done, all you can pray and you cry again. Oh my, pray and you cry. Oh my, pray and you cry. Oh, you pray and you cry. After you've done all you can, you just stand. Oh, you just stand. Oh, man. Hey, man, listen, if I could just get y'all to face the congregation. Amen. Precious. How, how old is the baby? Six months. Six months. Man, she's precious. Oh, she's precious. Amen. And thank God for her. Amen. And uh, are y'all looking at what the Lord is doing? Amen. Listen, and for those of you that are on this side, I want y'all to get a good look at y'all brothers and sisters. Because... There was a time when we all was on this side. Amen. And I don't know if you can remember when you first came into this ministry that you didn't know nobody, didn't nobody know you. And so when you sat down, you just felt like you were so alone. Listen, don't allow these brothers and sisters to go through that. When they sit down next to you, embrace them, love them, introduce yourself to them, let them know that we are glad that y'all are here, amen, and so I want y'all to uh, make their experience different, because how many know we can make a difference, yeah. amen, and so let me do this quickly, listen, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sin and God raised him from the dead. The Bible said, thou shalt be saved. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. If you believe that, it says you have to confess with your mouth. So repeat after me. Say, I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is, Lord. is Lord. One day, One day he, died he died for my sins and God, and God raised him from the dead. Now, the Bible says that the moment you believe that, you are saved. Amen. Amen. Don't always feel like it. But you're saved because God declares you're saved. Now comes the process of trying to 
transfer out of the flesh into the spirit. And it's a fight, daughter. Because when you're used to doing what you're used to doing, when you want to do it to whoever you want to do it to. Y'all act, y'all don't, don't get brand new on this side. It becomes a struggle. But the power of the struggle is that if we fall, God gives us the strength to get back up again. And so at the end of the day, that is the praise. And so we thank God for your choice today. And what I want to say to all of you is that nobody can take this journey without having a place where they can get their fill up consistently. It's just like you driving your car. You can't drive your car any length of time without stopping to, by the gas station. Because if you drive your car long enough and don't get no gas, what happens? Run out of gas, don't it? You know what happens to us most of the time? We in the church and Sometimes we get distracted when we're in here and then we wonder when we get in the middle of the week why we get so irritated. It's because even though we were at the gas station, we, got, we forgot to fill up. We let people distract us, bother us. Cell phone ringing, texting in church. Tell somebody, I say, this is my time of fill up. Don't touch me, don't, touch, don't, don't poke me, don't ask me no questions. Wait till the service is over. And so at the end of the day, all I'm saying to y'all is, you don't necessarily have to come here. My job is to get you into the kingdom of God. And if you want to come back, we would be glad to have you. But that's not why we do what we do. We do what we do to try to get people in a position where they can experience God. And if you want to be here, fine. And if you want to find a church that's close to your house, that's cool too. Because all we want for you is to have this experience with God. And I believe and I know that there are some people that agree with me. When you finally give your life to the Lord and surrender, he begins to make you better. Amen. You hear me? I, I, I got to move, but, 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 but I need you to hear me when I tell you this. We're so busy looking for stuff to change around us that we miss the real change. Because the people that are around you ain't going to be the one that's doing the change. What God does in the middle of your people and the people you hang with is he change you on the inside. So that even though the people on the outside have not changed, you have changed and what God teaches you how to do is how to handle the people that's on the outside. You understand what I'm saying? until they get to the place where they want to change as well. And so we get, we get caught up and we go back to our lives and we want to see everything change. It don't happen that way. God changed you first. And when he changes you, then he gives you the power to change it. Are you feeling me? All right, because I need you to know that because you're a leader and I know it. That's why the Lord had me to stop here to tell you. You're a leader. I know it. I feel it in my heart and in my spirit. There are, there are young men that are looking at you. There are young women that are looking at you. And they're watching you because they need to know which direction to go in. Be the leader. Amen. Somebody give God a hat clap of praise. I want you to turn to your left. Amen. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise again for all of our brothers and sisters. In Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. The Lord is doing his work, ain't he? Amen. God bless you. Amen. That's your baby? That's your baby girl? All right. Amen. Mama got her baby girl in church with her. Amen. And uh, I'm grateful to God for what he's doing. Uh, let, let, me, let me share this with you. Uh, uh, where is, uh, uh, what's her name? In the black. She gone. Are these her children? Is your grandbaby? All right. Uh, I was noticing today, and I'm, we're going to pray and go home, that, uh, <laughs> what's her name? I can't even think of her name right now. Alex. 
she jumps up, she dances around, and uh, she looks at these babies. She said, get up. And they got up, and they started to clap. And then I laughed because, saints, that's the kind of boldness we're going to have to have in these days. Listen, listen, I know, I know, listen, listen. Because the Bible said, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart. And how many know you can't train somebody in something you don't know yourself? Listen, I was excited to see her. Just, I, thought that, I thought they was her babies, but I guess in her mind they were. And she told them to get up, and they was obedient. Thank God for the mother who's trying to raise some daughters. Amen. They got up, and they did what they were supposed to do. So give my sisters some encouragement in the Lord. Amen. I saw them up just clapping and swinging and swaying. Amen. And uh, I just thought that was just wonderful in the spirit. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. We're getting ready to go home. Let's stand to our feet. Listen. <sighs> Saints, let me tell y'all something. I hope y'all hear me with your spiritual ear. The Lord has allowed us the privilege to build this church in this community. And we have to respect the residents that live in these communities. Are y'all listening to me? I got a disturbing report that somebody on Seaburn was parked in front of a woman's house. And she asked for you not to park there. And the report is, now I don't know how true it is. I'm just sharing with you what they shared. Somebody got out and cussed the woman out. Now listen, now listen, y'all. Listen, 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 listen. Understand that that is not becoming of a child of God. Amen. Amen. Listen, if somebody asks you to move, just simply move. Because if it was your house, you would want somebody to respect your wishes. Am I right? And so all I'm asking you guys is that when y'all leave out of here and you have um, um, confrontations with the neighbors, don't. Don't, don't. don't fight with them. If you need somebody to help you find a parking space, we will find you one. Amen? Uh, and, but, but you can't be six hours late. Amen. <laughs> you you want to show up, you know, six hours late and we about to go home and you want somebody to find your parking spot. But the point I'm trying to make is that we got to be courteous to the people that's in this neighborhood. Amen. And so I don't know who you are, but as your pastor, and I'm hoping I am your pastor, I want you to take time to apologize to that woman. Okay. <laughs> Because whether you know it or not, they can make it very difficult for us in this neighborhood. Amen. And so we ain't trying to do that. We're trying to win them to Christ. Amen. She said, she, I was going to come over there to that church, but I don't know if I want to come now. I'm, I'm, Y'all laughing. All right. You just turned away a potential sister or brother. All right. And so at the end of the day, uh, if the Lord uh, uh, pricks your heart, Take the time and apologize to that lady, all right? Because if it was you, you would want the respect that somebody would give to you. Amen? Amen. All right. All hearts and minds are clear. Yes, ma'am? You have to pull that down, baby, because... Okay, well, listen, you his mama, right? Okay. Well, let me tell you something, mama. The same power that God has given me, he's given you. Okay? And I know sometimes we feel like the man of God got more power, but that's what I'm trying to teach all of y'all. 
The only reason it looked like I got more power is because a lot of times I spend more time. But your words of prayer is just as powerful as mine. Now let's look at the obvious. He survived the earthquake because his mama was praying. He, does, he survived an attack because his mama was yes, praying. Lord. Yes, Lord. And if his mama keeps praying, yes, Jesus. the Lord will continue to cover your yes, child yes, just Lord. because mama yes, opened her mouth. Yes, That's why these girls are still intact. Because a mama knows how to pray for her children. I'm where I am today because I had a mama that knew how to pray. Do you hear me? And so at the end of the day, daughter, I'm trying to teach all of y'all, all of y'all, the same power I have, you have because we serve the same God. And he's already survived. The earthquake has yes. already survived. The attack. Yes, it's because mama was praying. Yes. Now, let me ask you this. We got to go home. Uh, how many people in here know that you survived in your life because your mama was praying for you? Yeah. I'm the man I am right now today because of Pearlie Lawson praying for me. Okay? And so don't, somebody shout, don't underestimate your petition to God is just as powerful as the one that I have. Amen. We got to go home, but uh, I'm always in the process of trying to teach because I need y'all to know ain't nothing special about me other than the fact that I've been called by God. Amen. And what God has given me the power to do, I'm trying to teach you that you can do the same. Amen. Amen. Let us lock. Let us pray. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.